<laughs> I'm very glad you did that. I cannot believe this is your first time to Texas. That is, uh, is it shameful? It's shameful. I'm going to say it's shameful. It is shameful. Um, but I, I, it's not my first time in Texas. I've been in the airport near here many times. <laughs> well, as Kinky Friedman says, if you're going to heaven or hell, you have to change planes at DFW Airport. <laughs> I, I access both. Well, welcome to the hometown, permanent and otherwise, of the likes of Tebow Walker, Lyle Lemon Jefferson, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Charlie Christian, and many others. Uh, who have come before you and whose uh, shoes you fill more than admirably. Oh, it's an extraordinary yeah. performance and a thrill for us to have you here. Honored to be here. Yeah. Well, let's talk. <laughs> I've been called upon so we can talk briefly about what we're about to see. This is something that you did, if I'm not mistaken, for the first time in January of this year for the New York Guitar Festival. Is that correct? How did that come about? I, well, they asked me to do it. Um, to score, to do a live performance with a silent film. It's not actually the first time I've done that kind of thing. I right, think. for the kid. Yeah, it's the first time I did it with, a, with this film, yeah. And how did you approach it? Obviously in 1971, if I'm not mistaken, that's the year that Charlie Chaplin actually released his own score for it. That's the one that I have grown up listening to. It's the one that's available on the DVD. Mm -hmm. It's the one that I study. But it's not the one, obviously, you did not consult No, I didn't, I didn't base my... I, I did listen to it, and I do like it. Um, and it's a little... I found out after the fact... I mean, this came about because the Guitar Festival asked me to do this film, and because I very much liked the idea, I knew the film. Right. Um, and I found out after the fact that um, Charlie didn't actually approve of other people doing his course for his film. But, um, well... I, I like to think that he might have approved at least of my intentions in this. And, um, uh, yeah, I, so I, I, I did listen to his score, but what I was mostly interested, I mean, I'd heard the film with his score since a long time ago, since right. it came out. And, um, and the thing about, the thing about, um, the traditional scores on these is that when I saw them as a kid, they, I mean, they're of their period. It's of the period of the film. And when I watch the film in, in prepare, when I've been watching Charlie Chaplin films lately, in particular this one and, um, and oh, let's say City Lights and, and some others, Modern Times, but when I watched them as a kid, they seemed ancient. And um, when I watch them more recently, they seem contemporary. Especially, especially the kid in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, when I watched it as a kid, when I was watched the kid as a kid, um, it seemed funny, inherently funny, because it was old shit, you know? Right. Like, like even beyond the jokes, you know, the Charlie Chaplin's jokes and humor, um, it was funny because the film stock was old and, you know, it, looked old, that somehow made it funny. And it, it's odd that like time would kind of go backwards in that way. Or maybe it's me that is, I, I think it's partly time and it's partly me. <laughs> um, right. um, so. But how so, I mean, the, the themes of it are contemporary. They're probably in some ways more relevant now than ever. Well, yeah, well that's, that's what I think I'm, that's what I think I was feeling right. when I watched the, Somehow I couldn't see that. Uh, maybe I didn't relate as a as a teenager to uh, the theme of single fatherhood, um, and it was also a, like in the late '60s, early '70s, kind of difficult to wrap my head around the fact that people could really live like that. It seemed to be part of ancient history. In in fact, I, I found out something interesting that the set that he used for that is a, a very accurate recreation of the street that he grew up on in East London. So people, um, at this point, you know, I was working on it like after all this, you know, all the head, while all the headlines of the stock market crash and all that were, were uh, in the news and suddenly it didn't feel like ancient stuff anymore, you know? 
Does doing the score for it and what we're about to see, most of this is obviously improvised. You've seen the film, I assume, probably 100, 200 times at this point. Well, more than 100, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> but does doing this help find your way back into it? Obviously, it's going to have that effect for us, many of us who haven't seen it in a while. Some may have never seen it at all, certainly never seen it with a contemporary score. But does it help you night after night, performance after performance, I should say, find your way back into it and relate to it? I, well, yes, it does. I mean, I see it, you know, I see it differently every time I see it. Um, uh, there's a lot in there. Um, and. But I haven't I haven't performed it as much as you might think. I, this is my third public performance. Right, New York, and then I think just recent a couple of days ago, correct? Right? Yeah. Uh, wait, where was it? Yeah, I think it's my third yeah. third public performance. Both both were actually in New York, but one was a year ago at the Guitar Festival, and anyways, the other was more recently. What do What's the well, Do you find that Chaplin? You have worked with so many collaborators. You work with so many directors, so many musicians, so many producers. Do you find that in some ways working on this, Chaplin becomes your collaborator? Because one of the things I love about composers and, and film scores is that it creates that third thing. The visual, the musical, adds up to something entirely different that affects us profoundly in a, in a way that often takes us by surprise. Well, it would, yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it creates, uh, if, if any of you have ever seen uh, films before before there's a score on them then you know um, it makes a big difference um, and it does create a third thing and it's it's a third thing in which the music um, people often don't understand the effect of of film scores it's it's kind of tragic because some of the people who don't understand the effect of film scores are the producers who are paying for the film <laughs> um, And oftentimes the director. Often, oftentimes the director. Um, oftentimes the director. Yeah, be, and it's understandable in a way because um, when, when a film score does its job perf perfectly, it disappears. And you, I mean, I, I've played on a lot of them and I've written a few. And even I, like if I'm really into a film, and I do it for a living, and if I'm really into a film, I won't remember if a scene was scored at all until I go back and watch it a second time. I mean, if, if, if it's done really right, you just, you, you believe that you're um, seeing what in fact you're hearing. Well, I'll tell you what, while we're on the subject, let's just watch it. Yeah, let's see the impact. I'm going to need a second to two. I'm going to get out of the way and sit over here.